Welcome back to PCM 2022 for the final episode of Tudor Pro Cycling's first season. With only two races left, let's start off with the Tour de Limousin. Four days ahead of us, starting off with a hill stage but a flat finish. Stage 2 and Stage 3 both have an uphill finish. While Stage 4 is classified as a flat stage but has 2k altitude meters, so not entirely easy. We brought a strong duo to the race, Alex Baudin and Sean Flynn, so they should be able to take care of some of these stages. When it comes to our GC competition, likely two Hungarians are the big ones. We've got Walter and Fetter. Fetter with 79 hill. What is this man eating for breakfast? I need it. Here we go. We've got two kilometers of climbing, the final hill of the day, third cat climb. Flynn in last wheel. I'll try and hammer it a bit with Trastur. I want to get three riders over the top here so I can lead out Baudin, who will lead out Sean Flynn for the sprint. 2.5 kilometers to go. We're now sprinting with Charan to the final corner. Baudin in the wheel. Let's see if we can go with Baudin already at 1.5. Flynn in last wheel. He's going to launch in this corner. There we go. Come on, Sean Flynn. One, two, three on the road right now. Who else is sprinting? We've got Bonifazio coming up. It looks like Baudin might make it. No, we're going to go for a one, two. Sean Flynn wins ahead of Baudin. A 1-2 for Tudor, what a start. I'll be honest, I think that final corner helped quite a lot with our momentum and the momentum lost for the competitors, but a 1-2, I will not say no to that. Especially considering it gives us the first leader jersey in the Tour de Limousin. Next up, an uphill finish, Baudin versus Fetter and Walter. This won't be easy. With about 3k to go, we're looking really good right now with Baudin. Flynn is throwing away his leader jersey to help out our lad. Baudin second in GC right now, so... We're still looking quite amazing. I'm trying to make sure I can launch Baudin in the final stretch here. It looks like it's going to be more a uphill sprint than anything else here, which is fine by me. It looks like it's now Charest turn to bring Baudin forward. One kilometer to go. Let's wait a bit more. Let's launch right now from the wheel. Come on, come on, come on, Baudin. Come on, Baudin. Come on, Baudin. 700 meters to go. We're kind of blocked in, but we're moving through. I think we might have it. It's going to be close. Walter versus Baudin, and it looks like Baudin takes it. Perfect victory on stage two as well. That's two in a row for the squad ahead of Attila Walter. We lose the leader jersey with Sean Flynn, but we take it away with Alex Baudin. So all is good. Stage three is basically a copy paste. So let's try beating Fetter and Walter again with Baudin. With about 3.5k to go, Laveau and Van der Horn are fighting for the stage win. Laveau looks to be the strongest right now. The peloton is coming up behind though. I'm actually not chasing that hard behind the breakaway for the reason that... I'm fine with them taking away the bonus seconds because Baudin doesn't have a good day, minus two on the day, so if we can take away the bonus seconds from our competition like in Attila Walter, for example, then I'm very much fine with that. Flynn setting up Charin at the moment. Charin looking so good that he could have won the stage himself if I went for him, but we gotta defend GC. Baudin's our man, so let's do 90 with Charin. And let's keep this going. It looks like Lavoie is actually about to get caught. So my plan's not entirely working. Let's do 95 with Charain to the final kilometer. Let's wait as long as possible to launch with Baudin. Looks like Vliegen's doing well. Let's see if we can launch with Baudin in the last 400 meters. Oh my god. Are we actually still going to win? Eric Vetter, Vliegen, someone on the left right there. I don't think anyone will pass me. It looks like it's gonna be Baudin unless Vetter comes around in the last few hundred meters. Alex Baudin might win again. Yes. I think it's a hat-trick for Tudor right here. So a one, two, and three, as in three stages in a row, Baudin takes his second in a row. So a uh, wonderful Tour de Limousin so far. We've got 20 seconds on Walter, 26 on Fetter. That is defendable, I think. Especially with a sprint stage left, or at least the stage that is said to be a sprint stage. 2,000 altitude meters though, so let's just watch out, just in case. 4.5 kilometers to go, we are all in for the stage win. Thrust tour of the front, we've got three riders left, Charan, Baudin and Flynn. Let's try and bring this home. Four in a row would be amazing. Sprint coming up, I'm gonna up it towards 99 on Charan. Baudin is ready as well to launch. I'm gonna wait a tiny bit longer, it's slightly uphill, so Baudin can wait a tiny bit longer. Let's launch right now with Baudin. Flynn in the wheel, let's hold on to the wheel, let's hold on to the wheel, let's wait, let's wait, let's wait, let's launch right now. Come on, Flynn, come on, Flynn, come on, Flynn. Bonifazio on the right, he's really strong. Venturini is gonna win ahead of Flynn. Baudin crosses the line in, I think, six, so Alex Baudin bringing it home for us. Wonderful first race of today's episode. I wasn't aware until now, but it was a sponsor objective to have stage wins here, so 
we sure as hell succeeded. The same objective at Tour Poitou Charon, so let's try and do that again in the coming race. For this race, we brought Alex Vogel with 72 sprint, 73 acceleration, and Robin Fodervaux with 70, 71. The reason being, four of the five stages are flat sprint stages. There's also a 22 kilometer time trial, but I'm focusing on the stage wins for this one, so GC is not that relevant for me. Those stage wins will not be easy though, because we're not in the top 10 favorites when it comes to the sprinting. Let's prove the game wrong. With about 15k to go, we are catching the final remnants of the breakaway. A bit of a downhill sprint, so I've actually got no clue how to take this on. I think I might need to sprint earlier with Vogel here. 2.5 kilometers to go. Let's just launch with for the Vol ready. Vogel in the wheel. Let's wait a bit longer. But now the descent will start. So Vogel will go. Lead out was not perfect at all. Buddha, Vatra and Tesson fighting for the stage win. Looks like we are going to get a fourth position on this stage, which... Is not that great, but also not terrible. All the corners in the final stretch made it really difficult for our train to move up in the final. Let's hope we can do better on stage two. Honestly, a fairly similar stage. 6.5 kilometers to go. Again, not super easy to keep my train to the front. And the uphill part is not helping because Tondon is not the best climber in the world right now. Three kilometers to go. Let's try and get through. Foto Vogel, follow the wheel. Vogel as well. Come on, come on, come on. 2.4k to go. Kind of blocked in. Let's launch with Foto Vogel. Let's try and come out. Vogel is not in the wheel. We are spending loads of energy off the wheel. Let's go nonetheless before this corner. Vogel versus Jordi Wadelop, who seems to be better. No, Alex Vogel and all the sprinters come around. Oh. For a second, I had hope, but it was taken away from me. It's gonna be a simple top 10, perhaps position 9, 8, 8 it is. Looks like we've got a pure sprint stage on stage 3 based on the parkour, a bit less hilly than stage 1 and 2. Hopefully that helps. To my surprise, we've got some gravel roads along the way today. It's not actually having an impact on the race though, so at 15k to go, we are looking like a pure sprint. We're having a hard time catching the four-man breakaway up front, though. It's five kilometers to go, 28 seconds only. Oh, it's gonna be a close one with the breakaway. It's gonna be a really close one. Vogel is ready to launch with two kilometers to go for the Vol still ahead of him. Break is right there with three riders. We will launch right now with Vogel. Oh, looks like the break will win. Oh, no, no, we are coming too late. Vogel is not fast enough at all when it comes to acceleration. Jan Kuhn is passing around from Lotto Kernhaus. Yes, Jan Kuhn is winning. And we are coming somewhere in the top 10, unfortunately. Our sponsor won today's stage win in this race. So far we had a... Did we even have a podium? I don't think so. No podium so far, so not doing it. And that stage win will likely not come in this time trial of 22.1 kilometers. We are decent time trialists with Vogel, but... There's gonna be some better competition here. Considering we had sprint stages so far, GC is very close, so likely the time trial list will end up taking GC here. I'll still try my best with Vogel, because you never know what we can actually fetch out of this. We've got 67 plus 4 time trial because of our RDC being plus 3, so that's 71 time trial on the day, so that's decent. First intermediate for Vogel, and we've got a decent time, 6 on 6 seconds only. Final sprint right now, and we've got 7 on 21 seconds, that's a good time trial. When it comes to GC, we're now 7th, so we dropped a spot, that's not very positive, but on the other end, we basically secure a top 10 position in GC in this race, so I'm happy about that. On to the final sprint stage then, it is quite hilly in the last half it seems, so let's see if it actually becomes a pure sprint. With about 55 kilometers left, Left in the race, we are about to enter the hilly circuit at the end of this race. And in all honesty, you know what they say. If you want to make sure you are in the split, it's best to make the split yourself. So we're going to hammer that circuit, hoping to make a smaller group. 31 kilometers to go, down this hill and up the other one on the left right there. 95 with Weiss, small bridge right here, but again enough to put the entire peloton on a bit of a stretch. Here we go, Fabian Weiss onto this hill once again. Let's hope this one works. I believe this will split up the peloton for good now. Is that a gap? Please tell me that's a gap. It's almost a gap. There's a gap right there. Is it for good though? I don't know. Multiple groups in the peloton right here. Here I am desperately trying to get water to the front before we get to the next hill, but it's coming fairly soon. So Tondon is likely going to be a tiny bit too late. We've got Donze on the bridge once again. I won't hammer the bridge this time around. I'll wait for the next climb. Peloton is down to 68 people. Let's try and thin that out to about 40-ish people after this one. Indeed, a group of 43 with 9.5 kilometers to go. We've got a hilly circuit one more time, I think. So let's give that an attempt. Let's hope we can pull this off. 
Let's hope we can get a stage win with Vogel somehow. Three kilometers to go. Once again, the big hill coming up. Vogel in the wheel of Father Vo. Van Doyne first wheel. This is just before the final sprint, so we can't use too much energy on our sprinters. Let's keep going 93, something like that. Tandon can go right now, Fadevo is next, Fadevo is next, let's launch with Fadevo, Vogel almost, right now it's Tesson versus Vogel, Tesson versus Vogel, Fadevo in there as well, it's gonna be bloody Tesson taking it, you can't write a story this stupid, come on, get out of here, second and third, after all the work we've done, oh my god, I'm a broken man, simply broken, I thought we had it. And we did not. Second and third. GC-wise, we move up to uh, seventh. <laughs> we gained seconds, but we didn't drop anyone important when it comes to GC, so we didn't gain much at all. In the end, no stage win at Tour poitou Charon. They topped it in GC and a podium spot on the final stage. I'm okay with that, even though I expected a bit more in this. I expected that stage win. That was it for the season then. We wrote our last race and our last sponsor objective. We failed a lot of sponsor objectives but had a few good ones and our sponsor is overly happy so I guess we can't complain too much. Honestly I'm quite happy with our first season at Tudor Pro Cycling. Roughly 12 wins on the road itself, two of which are national championships and added on to that we've got three GCs at the Istrian Spring Trophy, two Dalsas and the Tour de Limousin. Unfortunately, based on our current transfers, we are not going to move up to the Conti Pro region, not even close to be honest, 49th, we had to be in the top 34. That being said, I have no issue with that, one more year in Conti before we move up to a pro team status, and then we will smash through that pro team barrier straight to World Tour. That's the aim. When it comes to our national team selection at the start of the year, we selected Switzerland. I honestly couldn't care less about riding the European Championships, but I do want to ride the World Championships, so let's get started with the time trial. As Switzerland, we've got the two Stefans at the start, Bissiger and Kung. We've got a very strong Bissiger with 82 time trial. Kung has 80 time trial and is in worse form, so likely Bissiger will do the best. 57.6 kilometers in UAE, so this should be a pretty hot, pretty long time trial. And turns out we are second favorite behind Wout van Aert. I'll be honest, we don't often see a time trial of 57 kilometers on PCM, so I've got no clue how fast I can go. I started off on 75 with Kung, I'm lowering down to 71 now because we are spending yellow quite fast compared to what I want to, so uh, I guess we'll see along the way how good we are doing. Let's take a look at the first time check. We are 11 seconds down only on Wout van Aert, but we overextended a tiny bit, so it's showing a better result than we'll have at the end, I think. Second time check, let's see if we're still close to Wout van Aert. 30 seconds down, still second though. In the final stretch with Stefan Kung, and we are fifth on a minute of Wout van Aert. Bissiger now on the road with a plus three on the day, so he has godlike time trial stats. On to the first time check for Stefan Bissiger. Come on, my man, you can do it. He's beating Victor Kampenarts of all people ahead of Wout van Aert. Nine seconds for Bissiger right now. Are we going too fast? Are we not going fast enough? I've got absolutely no clue, but let's hope we can keep this up. Gana stranding on five seconds of us. Bissaker entering the second intermediate. I'm very scared, and we are still first, 19 seconds ahead, but Gana's close, though. I think Gana's gonna come really close, and all oh, 12 seconds down. We extend our lead on Filippo Gana. Ooh, we ran out of yellow with about five kilometers to go. That's far. That is very far. This is not good. Final 500 meters for Bissiger. We're gonna hammer the final stretch and we are three seconds ahead of Victor Campanards, which means that likely Gana is going to destroy us on the finish line. He is six seconds ahead of Bissiger. All in all, the exact result that was predicted for us, but behind a different rider, I still believe we could have won this if I played it better. On to the World Championships in Wollongong, the road race then. We've got a parkour that is classified as a flat stage, but... The parkour says something differently to me, like 10 times Mount Pleasant in there with one time Mount Kira, Wout van Aert and Van der Poel are the favorites, so not entirely the purest flat sprinters, although Wout van Aert can deliver a hell of a flat sprint these days. Fabio Jakobsen third favorite, I don't believe he gets over these hills personally. Who will get over these hills? Obviously our leader is going to be Yanis Foisar, yes indeed, Tudor pro cycling legend, the best Swiss rider in existence. Nah, if we have to be honest, Mark here, she is gonna be our man most likely, or a mid, or a Schmidt, or a Kung. I think Vazar is more likely a uh, domestique rider or a breakaway rider on this parkour, but it's gonna be tough to win. Funny enough, Van Aert is currently riding for Philipson, so 
I don't know what's happening anymore. 13 kilometers to go with Van der Poel and Jakobsen in this race. Van der Poel might also be riding for Jakobsen pretty soon. So I'm just going to try and hammer it up this hill to get with, um, well, basically Schmidt right now. And hope that Mater can stick on the wheel and attack at the top of the climb. Something like that. I'm hoping that all the teams go for their sprinter instead of their climbing rider, which would be a mistake from them. But would be good for us. Schmidt now halfway to climb almost. I'm going to up it towards 95. We've got a two-man group doing well. Wout Finard in our wheel. Caleb Ewan is trying to hold on. I'm going to try and make a move with Mater right now in the last stretch of this climb. We've got the peloton behind kind of sitting up. Come on, Schmidt. Come on, come on, come on. Keep going if you can. Mater, keep going as well to the line, my friend. We've got 9.5 kilometers to go. A gap of 45 seconds. Oh my god, Ginomater is doing God's work right now. Eight kilometers to go, we've got 45 seconds. Ginomater might become world champion right here. Bit of an odd way to do so, but it is happening. In the peloton, Peterson, Mohoric, Van der Poel are all riding. They're trying to catch mid, but Mater has 46, 49 seconds on them. 51 seconds, final two kilometers. Come on, come on, come on. 57 seconds, Mohoric still the rider pacing. We are gonna bring this home. We are gonna bring this home. Gino Mader is going to become world champion of all people. Gino Mader is world champion. How? I don't know. Genuinely unbelievable. Gino Mader crazy and it's honestly a bit bugged like what can i say about it i'm pretty sure wout finard waited on phillips in there i'll take it a free world championships it's always unfortunate when you're doing these national team races and then you win something but it's really for a rider on another team so you're not really winning it for your own team you know since we are finishing off season one of the series let's take a look what happened in the world around us in world tour Tadej pogacar won a third grand tour in a row unlike in real life roglic came in second here maz won the giro and la vuelta was won by martinez when it comes to the monuments caleb ewan wins milano sanremo after all the second places there casper asgren a second rvv a Roubaix, dylan von barla same as in real life enric maz a really good season both the giro and LBL and Pogacar has both the Tour de France and Lombardia like in 2021. Taking a look at the World Tour transfers as well, we've got Grégoire going to AG Dezer. Damn it, that's our man. He was supposed to sign for us. Sörenkro Andersen joining Astana together with Vermeer. This team just went from a zero cobble team to a decent cobble team in one transfer season. Trenting going from one oil team to another, joining Bahrain. Kofit is suddenly becoming a lot weaker because their man Guillaume Martin is leaving for DSM of all teams. Oh my god, Sagan is joining DSM. Sepeda, Wout Pools. But obviously they are losing Sörenkra Andersen and also Temin Arden's Mont to Ineos. Jesus Christ, Ineos is losing Ethan Hater to Drone Hopper. A pro Conti team. Meanwhile, they're making everybody's life more difficult by signing Cristian Rodriguez. They've now got Carlos and Cristian in the same damn team. EF basically doing fuck all. Anter Marche losing both Christoph and Pozzo Vivo, probably because they need to pay off Binyam's new contract extension. A garbage transfer season for Jumbo Visma, getting three riders that are basically halfway into their coffin already. Crater, Bodnar, and Lammertink. Lotus Sedal's transfer season, someone like in real life. Nobody knows what they're doing. And Movistar is getting Mark Cavendish. <laughs> Oh my god. Together with Sean Poussin. You can't make this up. Pretty good transfer season for a quick step though. Two riders being retired. That is David and Skeise. And they're replacing the older Mark Cavendish with Kaylin Groves who is likely to actually pop out as a breakout sprinter in the next years. Bike Exchange doing the opposite. They are basically getting rid of Groves, the talented sprinter, and getting an old Kristoff to replace him. Looks like Matthews is also leaving for Arkea. The Matthews transfer helps Arkea a bit when it comes to their World Tour position as they are actually going to World Tour. Paul Penue, great signing, 20 years old, 75 sprint already. Next to that, also Lenny Martinez, 19 years old, 74 mountain. The old prices must be down looking at the transfer season of UAE. What the hell is going on there? Despite having a worse season than 2021, Tare Pogacar takes home the Sinai Trophy head of Mass and Gino Mader. Jesus Christ, we brought him there. Anyway, here we are then. This is our team for 2023. We've got our new riders in the squad. Ivan Romeo, 72 Hill, for example. Gage Hecht, 71 Cobble, 71 Prologue. Leonard van Eetveld, 71 Hill as well. We've got Fredheim, 
growing up as a sprinter, Wang as a time trialist, and Fabio Kristen in here as well. I like the additions, very young riders, this team will grow in the next year, and we are 100% going to a pro team status in 2024. But before then, some racing to do in Season 2, and I can't wait to get started. But for now, I'm afraid this is the end of today's episode and this first season of Tudor Pro Cycling. 15 victories are starving. Alex Boran together with perhaps Yanis Vazar. They're gonna grow together with our new signings in the next seasons. Thank you for watching, taking your time out of your day to watch Tudor Pro Cycling. I truly appreciate that and I can't wait to see you for 2023. Goodbye.